Welcome to NASDAQ Trade Talks. I'm your host, Jill Malandrino, Global Markets Reporter at NASDAQ. Joining me at the market site in Times Square, New York City, we have Sultan Megji. He's the founder and CEO of Neocoba. We're going to take a look at how leveraging AI technology can support community banks and credit unions. It's great to have you with us, Sultan. And it's a great topic because it dispels the myth of how fintech could destroy banking. Uh, it's, it's a terrible myth, and it's absolutely not true. The best fintechs out there are the ones that are enabling banks to be productive, to be effective, to operate more cost effectively. And here at Neocoba, we're here to partner with banks, not you know, put them under the bus. All right, now let's learn more about the platform. You're leveraging AI. It's an API-driven platform. And again, this is supporting the community banks, the yeah. credit unions. Tell Absolutely. us about the platform. Absolutely, so we built it cloud first and AI first. So what that means is it can run automated, it can run cost effectively, it can run flexibly and securely, unlike the legacy players. You know, the, those guys are doing 20-year-old technology, five and seven-year contracts. It's just terrible. It puts the community banks and credit unions in an incredibly bad defensive position relative to other players in the market. And for us, we want to level that playing field. We want those banks and credit unions to be able to go head to head with the national banks and the fintechs to really try to continue to hold that role in supporting their local communities. Well, I would imagine the opportunity is they don't have these large legacy systems that they have to implement with the newer fintech. Right. So in a way, they can almost be ahead if you look at it from that perspective. Absolutely. And so they can run our system in parallel with these legacy systems. So from day one, they can immediately start adding value. They can offer better lending products, better depository products, and immediately add value at not a huge extra cost. All right. And because you're supporting community banks and credit unions, you're also supporting the local communities. Absolutely. Tell us about that. Absolutely. Over half of all small business lending in this country comes from community banks. It doesn't come from the big boys, but the cost of that, those loans are becoming higher and higher because of this terrible technology. And for us, if we can make it cheaper to offer those loans, these local communities can get better loans, more of those loans, and support their local businesses more effectively. All right, when you talk about AI, you talk about cloud-based solutions. Of course, cybersecurity is Absolutely. always going to be the first question. How are you addressing that? Yeah, so in a couple of ways. So first off, we've, de we've designed the system entirely security, so everything is encrypted. So that's number one. Number two is we are what we call regulatory forward. So we've been working with regulators for years to make sure that what we build conforms to not just what the regulators need, but best in class. But then also, we've hired the best cybersecurity people in, in the country to do this. In fact, our head of information security used to be deputy director at the CIA. And we figure if it's good enough for the CIA, it's probably good enough for a community bank. All right, let's get your longer-term outlook here. What does the community banking ecosystem look like in the next five, ten years? Yeah, hyper competitive. You know, lots of competition, lots of competition from each other, from fintechs, other players. Everybody is waiting for the day Amazon launches a bank account. That's coming. That's a competitive pressure. So you have that. You have a broader regulatory pressure to try to limit the number of banks in this in, in the country and keep that smaller. And then you have global competition. We're seeing a lot of European banks launching in the United States this year, and that's again adding more competitive pressure to this market. Is that good for the consumer if there's more competition? We'll have to see. So far it seems to be, but we don't know what the long term is because there'll be a consolidating function as part of that, and we're not sure that always works in the consumer's advantage. Mm, it'll be interesting for sure, Sultan. Absolutely. Thank you so much for joining us. Uh, on thanks for having us. And thank you for joining us on Trade Talks. I'm Jill Melandrino, Global Markets Reporter at NASDAQ.